Hi there, me again. This time with my friend Chris. Uh, as you may be guessing, we are uh, again going into the application of the Hubad Lubad. Chris has an intensive background in Judo. Uh, he has had some foreknowledge in the Hubad uh, drill. I don't know which. So probably the first thing you are going to see is uh, uh, us just checking out what is going and what is not going. And uh, since Chris does have an intense background in Judo, uh, I will probably more go into the Dumog and wrestling part because he will be able to handle that. And uh, so forgive me for any of the lapses. And uh, I may take the liberty to cut this or that out because I want this to be entertaining and uh, uh, instructional. I don't want to bore you with me just babbling around. That being said, come to my seat. Okay. I will do something about the clinch. And uh, the best clinch position, or my favorite clinch position, that I will end up in. And we will go in in a, in a minute at how to achieve that. My favorite clinch position is when I'm on the inside, when I have a bicep grab, and when I do have a necktie, where I have planted my elbow on his sternum and uh, my hand around his neck, or if I go for real, on his head. Because on his neck is when we are friendly, because then he has a certain ability to resist. If I do a pull on the head, which I will not do, or only in slow motion, uh, he has only these muscles to resist my whole body weight. So everybody who knows Thai boxing knows that this isn't going to do much. And if I really have the head, I can bounce him around, disorient him, and then do nasty things with the knee. Uh, and the point is, how do we enter this nice position from the Hubert Luba drill? Leading down. If he gets me, I have my elbow here can slide in, soften him up, and get this. If he doesn't slide in, then I'm, I'm going in anyway. If he punches, okay, if, if he does the punch, I will go with the elbow. Should he go, let's turn like this, and, and give me a slap, to, uh, to the side. Uh, mit, 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 mit der Hand zur Seite schlagen, genau. If he does this, I can roll over it and take the tie from here, still get the head and still get him disoriented. So, the first thing to notice if we go into the collar tie is it works both ways. It works when I plant my elbow on his sternum here. This is my right arm and this is his left side. And place my hand on his neck like this. But it works as well when I place my hand on the sternum like here. So the first thing that I would advise the practice is a kind of human dummy practice where uh, uh, he plants his elbow on me and gets, and we forget about the rest for the moment. Plants his hand here, exerts some pressure with his elbow on me so he sticks and now changes his hand so that from here, he changes to here. Note, here, my thumb points up. Here, if you see, my thumb points down. So, this is what you see from behind. And the point is, you see, my elbow, for the sake of the exercise, never leaves the place. So, if you will, please. Pull. Cool. No, my, my neck, just a bit, okay. Just now, with the elbow forward, yes. Now let go with the hand, change position. Take, take my neck. You, you must stand front of me. See, see, now it's easier on the joints. And press in with the elbow, yeah, yes. And pull again, and change. Pull, and change. So that we can get used to 
the two possible positions because actually since we never know how he will fend the incoming off, we must know both positions. Again, the first thing you need, you want to have pressure on the open. So you don't, be good isn't that English. Okay. So you, so you don't go in, this is not an elbow strike, so you don't exert force or power, you exert pressure so that you have a sticky energy. So if he makes a step back, then my elbow sticks. Because if I have no elbow contact, then he can just wind himself out like, see, if he ties me up without elbow contact, without elbow contact, whoop, then I'm doing what we all know from the Chinese movies. So I need the elbow contact. And also, if I want to change my grip, I need to stick. If I make like this, I mean, this is just visual and he can do any kind of stuff to me. So also this serves that I know what he's doing. With, where this is not so much sticky hands that this is a sticky body, but I know what he's doing and sends it. And uh, so the first thing we need to have is exert pressure on, yes, nah, that's right a little higher, so that you can really grab my head, right, and n not my shoulder, you, you can pull on my shoulder all day, it won't do you any good, try to get my neck, exactly, yes, so at the moment you, st you see I still let him do it, but he is still getting accustomed to the motion, so for those of you who are Old hands, this is boring stuff. I apologize. This is just a great way to learn how to get into the different uh, color ties. By the way, this is one of the reasons why we sometimes practice our hands like this, because this is a very natural position, it comes easy. This, in a manner of speaking, is a not so natural position. And uh, what I use in order to really get him, I use the blade of my hand and while I'm going in, doing a sawing motion that brings him off. If you see from behind, he stands now upright. Now I go in and use a sawing motion that brings him a little bit off balance. And now I can pull the neck and get the head. Of course, this is very tough on the neck, so we don't practice this full force, especially not with somebody who is not yet used to that because that may lead to injury, we don't want that. So, oh. right. yes, yes, that's, that's right, that's the right pull. When does better for you is? Also, das ist, die denken sich nur, was zu sagen, ein Sketch. Wenn, wenn, wenn es für dich so viel besser funktioniert, dann mach es so. Weil es hat dann nicht wieder genau die gleichen Proportionen. Für mich funktioniert es, ich habe sehr lange Ende. Ja, aber wenn es, wir wissen noch mal. Okay? So, we do it, uh, na, nah, that's where we stopped. Uh, we found out that Chris actually does his neck pull on the reverse side better when he's with the back of his hand pulling the thumb in this creep of the head and pulling down and then turning. And the point about the Filipino styles and the Indonesian styles again is they are built on flexibility, so that is okay. Because he's anatomically not exactly built like me. For me, it works like this. I can do that. He can't, but he can do it very well like this. So that is perfectly okay. So there is no such thing as a textbook technique. Those drills are sketches from where to build, not exact things. So we were, uh, he has exerts pressure. Please stand frontward. Okay. And exerts pressure on me. And now, now, of course, now we are standing exactly wrong. Now he's also using, just to get accustomed to the position, the biceps pinch. Not, not pinching with this, but to have the control. And draw down, pull me down. Exactly. Let me out again and change. Pull. Exactly. And the main trick here is to learn to draw me so that I don't headbutt him, because if he draws me and I go with it, I could headbutt him, so that he learns to give a pull 
But exactly, that is also what we, he exerts pressure with his forearm. I cannot headbutt him. If I try, I maybe push him away completely, but there is no way I could headbutt him. So the pressure serves multiple purposes. So it's very important that you exert pressure. The exert pressure comes from a slight rotation of the body, goes through this bone over the uh, upper arm bone and the elbow into my body, and is constantly there even if he when he does the change. So mostly of what we learn here is to exert constant pressure. Change, please. And again, if I try to headbutt him, there is no way I could do that because he's constantly exercising the pressure. Now, this is getting better. Okay, now when we are used to this position, now we know what we want. This is our goal. Then we go into the drill again. See, he got me. And now, what I do, this is also sticky because now I'm pushing it out and going for the grab. That is the next part of the puzzle that we learned. So let's isolate this. Come again. So this is out and forward with always this hand to check what his other hand does. Because he might do all kinds of stuff and I want to check that. So the movement is I come in with an outside slab entry. I, tr I don't do this with my arm muscles because if I'm stronger, I will get away with this. If he is stronger, I could press all day and nothing is going to happen. So, of course, I have better leverage, but I still use a bit body turning. Already here, slightly a hook, turn my body back, and I don't press it down. If it goes down, that's okay, but I actually only put it in, out, forward. Could you please film this from above my shoulder so that we really see the hand movement. So I give a slight jerk in this direction, but only slightly. I don't want to push him off because then I have lost contact and the game is off. But just a slight jerk. You see, I have a rolling motion with that. And now I jerk back. So this is the first part, and then I just slide up to get the grip here. As you see, I prefer something that I learned in the playing mantis style, but you could as well use just the tiger mouth from Tai Chi and Ba Gua Zhang, or you could just pinch it and grip it until you go crazy, not in training, don't break your partner. And uh, again, come, out of motion. It looks like this. And I want him, if possible, on the outside. I'm hard pressed not to step on his feet because my reflex is to do so. Uh, and now I go in. If I can, like this, and pull him down. Now I can, if I have his head, I can disorient him like a dancing bear. And after the disorientation, I get my shots in. Because if you don't disorient him, if he has me, pulls me down and directly goes for the knee shot. I can probably block this and in real life blocking a knee, an upcoming knee on the thigh with my elbow is very painful for him. That could result in dead leg. So this is a risk and a gamble because if our opponent knows what he's doing he will block this. If he is pushing and shoving me around a little bit and suddenly decides to come with the knee it's I won't probably even if I get the arm in between I will not have a stable base. So it's much better to first rattle the cage and then go in with the knee. So having this and going in with the knee, if you watch Thai boxing or kickboxing matches or MMA matches closely, if they go in, they always try to move the guy before they go in with the leg shots, unless they are on the roll anyway and the other guy is off balance. So if he is running anyway against the fence, then I can go in immediately. But normally I try to rattle him a bit. And, uh, Turn your hand. No, no, leave the elbow down. Turn. Like this, and a slight turn of your hips. 
through the inside? So, uh, like this. Take me by my hips now. And now, hook. And out. Forward and grabbing. Again. Hook. Out. Just, just this. Yes, that's it. Again, please. Yes, please again. Exactly, that's the motion. By the way, what is the word that a good sensei and uh, Sifu should use more often than any other word? It's again, because it means you did it basically well and therefore should repeat it. So if your sensei, Sifu or coach is any, what my sensei was, he corrected us for a while and then the only word we were ever hearing was again. So in that sense, again. Don't worry about foot position yet too much. It works with both foot positions. So use the one that is more intuitive for you and more comfortable. Exactly. Now try to make it, I will go slow, but make it come once. Try to make it one motion. We will go very slowly, but this must be fluid because if you do this in the breakdance version, that's no good. Then the other guy will just go away, walk around you, and whack you in the head. So, exactly. And uh, now there is the question, what is uh, hindering him in doing, if I do this, he could just swing his arm around, come above and whack me, or if I'm doing this, he could just rush in. So what is supposed to stop him doing this? Because this is just one arm, right? Is it like fencing with a foil? No, it isn't, because remember, this is just part of the exercise. We do this out of the hubbard, so I have the slap and the undercut where I already exert pressure and have contact. Remember, if I do this for real and not for learning, then I'm probably going to crash in here. I have his wrist, elbow control and shoulder control, and I'm probably going to do it from here. And there is much less opportunity for him to do something like this. So, if we do it in the long fist distance, this is for learning. Once we learn to do it out of the drill, exactly, then things look different. He, you see, my hand could still do rig havoc, so he, exactly, he must bring his hands in and can pull me down and move me around a little bit. Exactly, shaking me. Very good. Uh, I think this gives you an idea of what's going on. Now, you shouldn't show the poison without showing the remedy. So the question is, what can be done against the clinch? And uh, please take me into a clinch. And there are several possibilities. One say, you insert your arm here on the shoulder and then use the blade of your arm to go in his throat certainly works if it is a rather open clinch the way the Thai boxer said it. If this is a very closed clinch, there is no way how he could insert his hand like this. He, yeah, he may get it down there and maybe he, he... Remember, he has the judo background, so he probably knows what he's doing. He is, he is exactly doing that thing. So he is... Look, look what he is doing. He's inserting it from down below and dragging out, opening me completely up. And there is not much I could do, no matter how tight I hold. He can hold me off and off balances me. So instead of going to boxing or kickboxing, I change, and he does also, we change the game. He does judo or wrestling, because wrestlers know their way in around the clinch much better than boxers or Thai boxers do. Wrestling is their part of their, uh, clinch is part of their stand-up game. So, 
since we are practicing for self-defense, we are not looking for the solutions that boxers or Thai boxers have for the clinch. We are looking for judo or wrestling or jiu-jitsu solutions. And uh, his is even better than the one that I wanted to show. That's why I love to do these videos with friends. They know stuff I don't know. So please again, please nothing. And uh, you see, he's using his whole body weight. There's no way that I could stand this. And uh, would you please take me in the clinch so that I can try this? You insert your hand here. With the whole body so weight. Open. And he's open. And if I now just violently walk forward, for self-defense, I could do nasty things, destroy the leg. If we are among friends, I could go for a sweep. And I just learned this move. So isn't that great? That's the fun in doing movies. And if I see that right, you are in the clinch. And basically for karate people, this is from here, almost like an upward block. And I can tell you, not much that you could do to resist it. So this is a very simple move against the clinch. The one that I wanted to show you, please take me the clinch again. Was, and now we are standing exactly the wrong way. Comes from wrestling. I am taking, now we are standing wrong again. I am taking this like a pull-up bar and I am now turning my hip. And have him also in a very nice position. And this is also something, if his clinch is really tight, really good in, there is not much I could insert anywhere. I could always, however, go downstairs, and in case he really blocks me, so I don't get that. That is the other thing. Grab, and turn out, I'm using my shoulder, so I have him here under my shoulder and between my head. Turn out, free my hand, I could even have some, but this is, you know, this is, this normally just works in the dojo, this never works in the street, you just don't get it. But this motion, I am in the clinch, I'm grabbing, turning out like this, his arm is in here, get out. So this doesn't look pretty, but it works very well. Uh, that was, I think, what I wanted to show on the clinch today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Cut.